This is Live in the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson, presented by Salt Life. Live salty. Old Bahama Bay is one of my favorite places to visit in the Bahamas for many reasons. But one of those reasons is because it's very convenient to fly over from Florida to West End on a private plane. And the private landing strip is probably only about two minutes from Old Bahama Bay. So it's very conveniently located. We get off the plane and five minutes later, we're in our room. There are so many great amenities at Old Bahama Bay. Everything from the tiki bar to the pool, to the long white sand beach they have out front. And of course they have a great restaurant, a huge marina. Just everything about Old Bahama Bay is just pleasant. It's just a pleasant place to visit. It's just beautiful water all the time. Close to the Gulf Stream, close to blue water fishing, great reef fishing, amazing bone fishing, all kinds of activities to do on site. That's one of the other reasons that I like the Bahamas so much is there's so many different things to do there. If you don't want to just fish and you want to get out there and do some diving or snorkeling, you can do shark dives. We did see several other sharks on this particular dive as well besides just the nurse sharks. We saw several nurse sharks swimming around the wreck. There were quite a few of those there. We also saw some small reef sharks. It was really neat being able to swim right into the middle of the yellow jacks as they just swam around me. We also saw some trigger fish and some big jacks. Bunch of yellow jacks there and jack crevals. So after having a pretty darn good day catching mutton snapper and other reef fish, I decided to jump in because we had a little bit of time left and the captain did want a hogfish. And I looked around a little bit and didn't see any hogfish, but Noe was in the water with me and he had a pole spear and we did spot a couple lionfish. So uh, he went down and popped some lionfish. It was his first time ever using a pole spear and he did a fantastic job. He came up out of the water, man, and he was just so happy. He was smiling ear to ear, and you know, I mean, it's, I don't even remember the first fish that I shot, but I'm sure, man, I was pretty stoked too, and he was pretty pumped up about it. So after moving on from that lionfish, we decided to stop at one more small wreck on the way in to see if there were any hogfish there. I didn't see any hogfish there, but I did see a nice mutton snapper that was hanging out near the front of the wreck. So I started easing my way in towards that mutton snapper and trying to get a little closer to him without spooking him. And all I had in my hand was a Hawaiian sling. And Hawaiian slings are very weak. I was kind of just trying to ease towards him to get a good shot off. And I pulled back. And I hit him perfect right in his gill. I thought it was, I thought I actually stoned him at first because he kind of went like he was going to turn over on his side. But he just kind of kept going and circled back towards the wreck tried to grab the shaft and shove the snapper down into the sand to push that shaft farther in him because I knew it wasn't in him real good and as soon as I went to go grab that shaft and put him in the you know poke it into the sand he ended up taking off and pulling right off of it On the second day, we stopped at another shallow reef that Keith said would be a pretty good place to catch some more muttons, and he was right. First cast, second day, another good fish. Oh, good fish. Oh, man. 
All right, we're on them. <laughs> All right, guys, well, we're out here for day two with Captain Keith, and uh, we're gonna try to get a few more snapper. Had a great day the other day, but the rain came in, so we cut it short. Decided to do a couple more hours today and see what we can come up with. I told Keith that I wanted some nice mutton snappers. I didn't really want yellow tails or the other smaller stuff. And you know what? He delivered. He put us on the nice mutton snappers. This is just mutton madness out here in Grand Bahama. And the wind is whipping today. Woo! There it is. Big old chunk of bait hanging out of his mouth that we caught him on again, that blue runner. One of my favorite things to use. Another beautiful mutton snapper. And these are such strong fish. Some of their main diet is actually crabs and shrimp and stuff off the grass. But of course they'll eat about just about any bait fish will drop down there. And we're just using chunks of blue runner right now. Right after icing that fish, I dropped another bait down and I started getting pecked right away. Oh my gosh! <laughs> it really doesn't get much better than this when you're fishing for mutton snapper. We go out to 150 feet in Florida for this. We're in 14, 15 feet right here. It is just unreal how easy it is to catch big mutton snapper this shallow. All right. <laughs> and that's the smallest mutton snapper we've caught in three days. And there it is. Another nice mutton. <laughs> oh, and the best part about it is they taste so amazing. And uh, we're gonna be cooking these up today at Old Bahama Bay, just like we did the last couple days. I'm gonna have to dig this hook out. They get it down so darn quick, they hit it fast and furious. Oh, look at this hook getting right there where I wanted it, right in the top of his mouth. It's a five aught J hook. And another good mutton snapper. After catching a few more pretty hefty mutton snappers, the mangroves started moving in. And man, when those mangroves start moving in, you can pretty much catch those guys one after another as well. When they get aggressive and they get turned on, I mean, it's wide open. That's a mangrove. All right. It's a good size mangrove, too. Look at that. Get my hands on this feisty thing. And on a mangrove snapper, you gotta watch out because he will try to snap you. Look at, <laughs> I'll try to show you the teeth without getting my finger bit. Talk about a snapper and get snapped. Look at the fangs on those things. Real, real sharp teeth. Great eating fish. And that's a good sized mangrove right there, man. He's going home with us for sure. I know you hear me say it a lot, but the mangroves were coming in one after another. Mm. Boy, there's some big mangroves here too. A good size right there. And then I got hit by something even bigger. It definitely wasn't a mangrove snapper. It was pulling pretty hard. Whoa, he wants to go over there. Mm. Good fish. Oh, it's that 20 to 40 class tsunami rod, man. That'll pull them in. It's got a lot of backbone to it, but it does have that flexible tip. So you can feel everything that's happening. That's not a mutton. Got something different here. I don't see any red. Big white margate, so I was happy to see that. Good margate. They also taste great. Yeah, it's a big one. Look at the head on that thing. Looks like you got hit by a spear gun there, a little deformed. After catching a few more mangroves, I ended up hooking into another mutton. Go, oh, yeah! Got him! <laughs> Woo! That one hit it good, huh? Look at that. <laughs> Think I got another mutton. Oh, this is a mangrove. It's gonna be a big one. Oh, yeah, it's another mutton. There we go. That was a big old swing. Now that mutton wasn't as big as some of the others that we caught, but it was a great way to end it before we jumped in and tried to find a hog or something else to shoot. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw this one in the cooler, and I'm gonna try to pop a couple hogfish. I think I'm gonna jump in for a little bit and see if we can catch some hogfish for tomorrow night, because this is our last day here fishing. And there's another look at that mutton snapper. 
real pretty fish. For more fishing and diving action, follow along on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter at Captain Jimmy Nelson. Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson was brought to you by Salt Life. Live salty.